uh, thank you, Teng, uh, for reading uh, The Human Root, which is what we call uh, that poem. And it's uh, an important uh, part of our tradition, coming empty-handed, going empty-handed. Uh, that is human. And the rest of the poem. Uh, I'm not sure myself about the origin of that poem. I've also uh, heard that uh, it was the work of a uh, Korean monk around the year 1300. Uh, but yeah, in Chinese. And uh, uh, Shuang here uh, on screen uh, actually helped me uh, read Zen Master uh, Song San's script, Chinese uh, script, uh, make out uh, each word uh, because another uh, actually teacher now in our school, uh, Rebecca, uh, um, wanted to chant it, uh, to set it uh, to music and chant it, and uh, she's not here now. Now, the meaning to ask her you know, how that project uh, went. You know, she is a musician, uh, but I, I don't know what um, what she meant by uh, setting it uh, to music. Uh, so the human root, this may appear again soon, we'll find out. So, so thank you again. Uh, uh, does anyone uh, have a question? Uh, this is Shuang, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, my uh, eight-year-old daughter, uh, when they asked me a question, uh, she heard the word suffering from school, and she asked me what that means. Uh, I don't think I gave the, uh, you know, a good explanation. So I was just wondering if you were asked about that question for, you know, a little kid, how would you respond? What is suffering? <laughs> so uh, I would ask the child, has anything ever hurt you? Did you ever have a real bad feeling in your body? You know, explain uh, maybe in simple terms what a child could uh, understand by physical uh, suffering. And I think that would come across pretty well. But of course, there's also psychological suffering. And so maybe say to the child, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, does your mind feel, you know, not right? Do you feel troubled sometime, you know, inside? Not that your body hurts, but some kind of feeling, some kind of feeling that hurts. Uh, maybe someone uh, hurt your feelings, and you know what that's like? Yeah, so that's suffering. So your body can suffer when you have any kind of pain. And uh, maybe your mind and heart suffer when you have some kind of bad feeling about something. So, of course, it depends on how old the child is. Um, so I'm 78 years old. And if you had to explain it uh, to me, it might be more difficult than explaining it uh, to a child. Because after all, what is suffering? Well, it's one of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism, of course. Um, you know, the Four Noble Truths. You know, life is suffering. Birth is suffering. Old age is suffering. Uh, the uh, Sanskrit word that maybe Buddha actually used, or his uh, dialect, uh, local language, which was very close to Sanskrit, is dukkha. And uh, it's very specific, you know, not, not just life, but uh, jara piduka, jata piduka, the p means also. So jata is birth, jata piduka, jara piduka, maranam piduka, maranam is death. So uh, birth, old age, and death uh, are all dukkha. So what exactly does dukkha? I mean, um, well, you know me, I always give some related etymology. 
Uh, so uh, dukkha is a uh, cognate uh, actually with uh, the Greek uh, prefix that comes into English as dys, dukkha, dukkha, dukkha. We can see the relationship. So, uh, you know, dystopia, uh, for instance, that's um, actually literally bad place, <laughs> you know. Uh, sometimes we think of uh, our culture, our society, our locality as being dystopian. Uh, there are, you know, science fiction um, uh, books about uh, dystopian cultures, not so good. So, uh, yeah, dukkha just means that, not so good, uh, you know, <laughs> bad. <laughs> it hurts, you know, it's a cause of suffering. And of course, Buddha also prescribes a way out of suffering. So the Eightfold Noble Path leads the way out of suffering. But uh, this isn't the time for me to give a, a lecture on all of the fundamentals of Buddhism. So thank you for your question, Shuang. And um, let me know how that goes in explaining suffering. Uh, yeah. To your yeah, please. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I will do that. I will do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there another question? So I guess I have to fill in the silence. So, um, related to suffering, actually, is uh, one of the parameters which I have to uh, give a talk on next week at the Midwest uh, Sangha um, pastoral event out in the countryside. So there are six uh, paramitas. Paramita means uh, a virtue, uh, some transcendent good, you know, paramita. You know, param indicates, you know, it's way up there. Um, so there are six of them, and one of them is kshanti, which is patience or forbearance, uh, which is uh, the virtue that we need right, when we're beset with any kind of suffering. Of course, we have to do something to alleviate the suffering if it's the suffering of others. But if it's our own suffering, and particularly if um, it's unlikely that can, it can be alleviated, maybe it's a terminal disease. Maybe it's the terminal disease we call life. You know, it's, life is suffering. So, kshanti you know, is the Sanskrit word there. Kshanti is one of the paramitas. So pardon me while I rehearse a little for next week. I won't go on for too long. I'm still hoping for another question. So, so patience or forbearance. So when do we need uh, patience? Well, maybe you need patience to get through the rest of this talk. You know, it's maybe a source of suffering for you of some kind. I don't know. Uh, but anything in life that is difficult, First, maybe there's something you can do about it. That's always, that should be the first response, whether it's your own difficulty, someone else's difficulty, how can you make it better? What can you do? And then if it's uh, something that you simply have to endure, then well, welcome you know, to the human club uh, because we're all faced with this. When we are going through some suffering, we sometimes have the thought, you know, why me? Yeah. Well, it's everybody. It is the human condition. It's, uh, this is the fate that men were born for. It is Marilyn you mourn for. Who's the poet who wrote that? I can't remember. Maybe it's Yeats. Oh, so. <laughs> it's not Marilyn. 
something, or are you grieving over Golden Grove? Oh, it's um, um, that Jesuit priest in uh, the, the 19th century. Um, I know you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> but I don't remember his name. But yeah, it's the fate that we're all born for. Yes, who is it? This is Charlie. No, you actually have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, Who's going to tell I, me the name of the poet I'm trying to you're, remember? You're, you're, you're encouraging me to question the- Lord uh, Manley Hopkins. Right Lord Manley Hopkins, thank you. <laughs> yes, Charlie, what is your welcome question? Okay. Well, following up with Schwang's uh, uh, question to you about uh, suffering, and one of the things that you said was that in basic teaching of our practice is that we learn from the Buddha how to get out of suffering. Okay. And th certainly that requires, in my own mind, a sense of uh, patience or a need for patience. And that means cultivation to me. I mean, as a gardener, I mean, I, I like to cultivate plants. So, I mean, I may start a seed and, and water it and I have to wait sometimes three weeks before I can even see a sprout. You know, that, that edges my, my uh, uh, need of patience because I, I become very impatient. And then I, I, I don't suffer from it because I, I trust that it will sprout, okay? Something will grow. And with uh, the same idea of uh, finding relief from our suffering to, to finding a way out of suffering, mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess it happens real quickly for some people. And I, I think our, our culture is almost, you know, expecting expecting that we can press a button and we can find an answer that'll help us immediately uh, find relief from suffering, but it doesn't always work that way. I, I'm sure it doesn't work for me that way at all. Uh, what What is really meant by that? What is meant by what? What is meant by finding a way out of suffering? Yeah. In a Buddhist sense. Yeah. So, do you uh, remember the Eightfold Path? Um, I would remember it if I saw it. Don't ask me to recite it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yes, certainly. Yeah, that's his recipe. Okay. Yeah. We don't, we don't really teach that very much in our, in our practice, though. Um, I'm sure we teach it when we, uh, Judy, you must have taught this in the Compass of Zen at the yeah. very beginning of the Compass of Zen. Uh, you know, we have basic uh, Buddhism, and um, that's an easy place uh, to find it. Um, and so uh, we do teach it, but uh, you know, we like to think of ourselves as Zen practitioners. We've left basic Buddhism far behind. That's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Buddha's uh, own practice, you know, sitting under a tree, yeah, we say that's, you know, the origin of Zen practice, you know, this uh, sitting practice you know, that uh, we cultivate. Um, but uh, his teaching was not go sit under a tree. It was uh, much more uh, direct than that. Um, so we may tend to forget that uh, Zen practice uh, the cultivation of Zen practice uh, is a deeply Buddhist practice, deeply rooted you know, in you know, the Four Noble Truths and the uh, Eightfold Path. Uh, as far as the paramitas are concerned, which is also very basic Buddhism, uh, you know, we tend uh, to emphasize in Zen uh, the sixth one, which is prajna. Well, the fifth one and the sixth one. The fifth one is dhyana. Uh, dhyana is the Sanskrit word that gives us, it's pronounced chana in Chinese and then shortened to chan. And then that chan is pronounced zen in Japanese and in American culture, that's the word that uh, we use. Uh, in Korean, it's son. So the 
fifth parameter you know can be translated as if you want as a, as zen jhana and the practice uh, of zen the practice of meditation leads us you know to uh, the sixth parameter which is prajna so uh, we translate that as wisdom so the uh, jna part of it is uh, just like the english word know k n o w jna kno that's a, again that's a cognate word uh, so uh, knowing what this world really is uh, knowing directly perceiving what it means to be human perceiving with that kind of wisdom what our job is uh, in this world so it all comes back to our teaching of compassion how can we help this world and yeah it does begin by helping yourself by coming to some kind of deep understanding of what it means to be human of what suffering is of where it comes from what can be done about it so, so i really do think that this uh, compass of zen uh, course uh, you know is uh, and we re this is what maybe the third or fourth time um, i've only taught it once judy uh, six this is the sixth time <laughs> And the first third of the book is basic Buddhism. <laughs> so let's return to our roots, <laughs> you know, by all means. Yeah. That's what Zen is really all about. And we do encapsulate this in our practice in the four great vows. And sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all. The second, uh -huh. what we more think of as Zen, your delusions, we translate it uh, endless. Actually, any kind of psychological disturbances is what the word means. And we vow to cut through them all. And then we think of the third as, yeah, the teachings are infinite. Yeah, teachings, that's okay. You know, you can do that. We vow to learn them all. And the Buddha way is inconceivable. You know, we vow to attain it. So beginning and ending with basic Buddhism. Uh, that's what we do here, folks. Stan, Brandon and Ariana have raised their hand. I don't know if you're aware of it. Let's see, yeah. Please, uh, please unmute yourself. Oh, hi. To ask a question. Yeah, sure. My question is, if life is suffering, then why should we have children? Uh, uh, yeah. So you have children so you can uh, help them. When you uh, raise a child, yes, that child, like every other human being, will suffer. Uh, so the first child that Judy and I had, an adopted child, uh, died uh, as an infant. Yeah. And uh, that's an extreme case of the suffering that uh, a child will undergo. Um, and the child will uh, suffer not only as a child, but as uh, a human being. So your question is, you know, why should we live at all? If we're all doomed to suffer, cut off even the origin of life. Uh, and so uh, what that leads to is a universal suicide pact. I don't think anyone uh, would think of that as a, a solution to the problem uh, of suffering. So the child that we bring, the children we bring into the world, yes, they are suffer, but they also have the potential to relieve suffering, to relieve other people's suffering. And you know, rearing a child, uh, you have the opportunity, you know, gently and gradually to teach them that that uh, it's not life is not just about you know their own suffering but how can you help how can we help 
of this world. So pretty soon we're starting, and I think uh, Blake is spearheading this, a, a children's uh, class. Um, and um, I don't know how uh, young you can be to be in this class. Uh, is there an, uh, an age frame? You say zero, you bring them in, newborns? Great. Yeah, yeah, bring in your babies. <laughs> It will teach the other kids a lot. Yes, absolutely. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I, my, I, if anything, there's an upper limit. At some time, you need to just go to the Dharma room. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, I don't know. What's the upper limit? Twelve. Yeah, I'd say like when you hit junior high age, maybe. Yeah, twelve. Yeah, you know, in Catholicism, you receive confirmation uh, at the age of twelve, and then you, you consider to be religiously an adult. So maybe that's a good uh, <laughs> cutoff point. Yeah. So we help each other to help this world. And this work begins with child rearing, both at home and in, we hope, their, their schooling, uh, you know, their education. And, uh, you know, we continue uh, that training. How can we help? Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all. And the word we translate there is save it means to uh, transport, to carry across, and to carry across the sea uh, of suffering. Uh, that's what we vow. And um, it's the great work of life and death. I'm not sure what time it is. I have three different time pieces here, but I think that may be a good point uh, to stop. So thank you all very much.